in 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse number 16. But first I'm going to go back a little bit starting in verse number 14. I think you're all ready, right? So it reads, these things I write to you, though I hope to come to you shortly. So the Apostle Paul was telling Timothy, he writes this letter to him and he says, I write these things to you, though I hope to see you shortly. But if I am delayed, I write so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. So the church of the Lord, the body of Christ, that building that our Lord is still constructing, glory be to our God. Now, verse number 16, it reads, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Godliness means to be pious, to be righteous, to, be, to do what is right and good. To do what is honest, holy, and perfect, that is that godliness. And it says that this mystery of godliness is great. Now, why does it speak of this mystery of godliness? Because our Lord Jesus Christ, our God, in his mercy, he had so much mercy of people, of mankind, that this is why he gave his son to save us out of that godliness and love and that mercy. He sends him so that we are saved, so that no one is condemned, so that we are able to enjoy the benefits of God, his blessings, and to enjoy one day eternal life. This is why it is the mystery of godliness, of what is good and perfect. And so, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh. God was manifested in the flesh. Here, he is speaking of the mystery of godliness. And we already read that that mystery is Jesus Christ with the preaching of his gospel. That wonderful doctrine of the gospel, this is the mystery. And it says it is the mystery of godliness. God had sympathy. He had mercy. And it says, and God was manifested in the flesh. So this is not saying that God appointed a man on earth and made him God, but he, God himself, was made flesh. He made himself like an ordinary man and was on earth among people for some time. And no one knew him. No one discovered him. No one realized it. Very well, and it says, so great is that mystery. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit. Because the spirit was always bearing witness of him. When our Lord Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, it says the heavens opened up and there was a voice a strong voice from the heavens saying, it was the voice of the Holy Spirit saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him, believe in him. He was saying, believe in him. He is the true one. He is the truth. This is why he was justified in spirit. The Holy Spirit bore witness of him many times and the apostles, they too, it shares the story in the Gospels that they, while they were praying, the Holy Spirit spoke, bearing witness that they needed to believe and follow our Lord Jesus Christ because he was God's truth. And so it says, justified in the Spirit, and he was seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, preached among those foreign nations, and some believed and received the spiritual gifts. They received the power or the gift of the Holy Spirit and received the spiritual gifts, and God, too, worked miracles and signs with the Gentiles. This was the testimony that Paul had, that he lived and experienced what he was seeing in reality. 
And it is a testimony that has continued on for years and centuries. And even to this day, we too, we say the same, that even to this day, we are led. We are ruled and taught by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit continues to do his work. So it says, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in glory when he ascended into the heavens before the eyes of about 500 people who saw him when he ascended into the clouds and there he disappeared. And so this is the mystery, the mystery of godliness. Godliness. 